There he goes. There he goes. It's a good fish. Very good fish. It's a big flathead. No. He's diving again. Let him die. All right, folks, the plan is today to head down to the lower end of the lake, drop the boat in, and go out to some deeper water. Um, I passed several guide trips. I've been catching fish in deeper water, and the water is not uh, really cold or really hot right now. We're in early fall, so we're going to see what we can find and talk about some of the reasons the fish may be there. Guys, I think we may have a little bitty fish on my spinning rod. Told y'all I was going to do some spinning rod videos. Do some spin tackle. That's what I got. Made a couple of drifts here and uh, hadn't gotten into any fish. This is the first one. This is a uh, Big Cat Fever rod, by the way. It's their spinning rod. This is an Ancient Mariner. It's their 5000 sp series spinning uh, reel. It's got some heavy braid on it. Uh, and the only reason I got that braid on it is because of what I had at the house. I just left it on. I have been using it shark fishing, doing some saltwater stuff. Overkill for what we're doing here, especially when you're catching four pound channel catfish like I just caught. But it's what we got on here. It's what we're fishing for now. Sucker. Get him. Get him released alive. But yeah, it's one of the uh, big cat fever. One of their spinning rods, they make a, it's virtually virtually identical to the uh, medium heavy actions that I use from them, I've been using for a while. It's just set up in a uh, spinning setup. A little bit of bigger guides on it, like all the spinning rods have, painted up the same. Core candle on this one. Like I said, it's a Ancient Mariner 5000 series. Pretty big reel. I think it's overkill for what I'm doing, but that's what I got got another one on the other side of the boat that is a 4000 series on the other rod so that's probably a little more in what in line with what i would suggest for most people all right guys that uh first fish was not exactly what we're looking for but i was happy to catch one um uh, what it, you didn't see was me making a pretty long drift covering a big swath of water where i caught some fish on a guide trip the other day some good fish there was nothing there so uh kind of made a move over here to the main lake d even deeper water than what i was in and at least i got one in the boat guys we may have a good eater right here yeah, that's a fish oh that's a fish that is a fish i was wondering what was going on i ain't hooked into a decent fish yet this ain't gonna set no world record, but it's nice to get something besides channel cat. Right here in the middle of the river channel, some deep water. Gonna get ready to change something here in a second. Get this one in first. Feels like it's decent fish. Not an on fire bite like we have had the past few weeks. But that's fishing. You gotta fish when you can, but we're taking it down. Probably gonna be about a 10 or 12 pound fish. He's a, woo, a lot of bubbles. Might go a little bigger. Up in the teens, maybe. I'll take it. He hit a big bait. That fella hit a big bait. That was a Missed him. Some, uh, yes, I am dragging both baits today. I got the chicken and I got the perch going. Both fish so far have come on perch, and this one came on a Perch head. There you say, simmer down. Nice fish. Good one. Oh, it makes it into the teens anyway. 
Happy to have you as a guest. Let's get you back. Now that's a little more of what I'm looking for. Uh, that's a good fish. That one came right on the edge of the uh, river channel, right where it drops down into, you know, 50, 55 feet of water. And uh, marking a lot of fish out in this area. It's not on fire with the bite. There's not a lot of fish biting. Uh, again, I'm trying both baits. I've got uh, the uh, perch out and I've also got the chicken out that's been producing fish. Uh, those first two fish have come on the perch. So, uh, I'm uh, going to keep dragging across here, go across this deeper water, and see if I can put another one in the boat. I may have one taking a bait here. Yep. Boom. It's funny, I was sitting there drifting. There's hardly any wind. A little bit. And I noticed the boat started going to one side. I'm sitting there on my phone looking at stuff, answering some of y'all's emails and questions. And uh, I look up, and the boat's starting to go to the side. And I look at the... I'm like, what? Boat shouldn't be going that way. I'm looking at my rod slowly pulling over. Got a fish. This is the one I just caught the last fish on and uh, put it back out uh, with a perch head on it, big perch head. And it went. This is the better fish. Good fish. We're about 50 feet of water. Oh, there he goes. It's a good fish. I'm going to net this one. Oh, my boat attitude right here. There we go. Yeah, something's been up with the fish pulling back deeper. I had guide trips out here for a couple of days and uh, fish were scattered and caught them and it was a good bite. And I tried some of those same areas this morning and it wasn't working. So I came out here to this deep water thinking they may have pulled deep and it looks like they have. Don't know why though, makes no sense. There he goes, there he goes. Loosen that drag up some. Good fish, very good fish. This is a big flathead. Go, oh, he's diving again. Let him dive. Let him dive. Oh, got him. Big old flatty. Bam! We've caught three fish, and we got a Lake Wiley slam. <laughs> we call it a slam whenever we get a flathead. Channel cat in the blue. That's a good flathead. <clears throat> good looking flathead there. Got all the hooks out of you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Simmer. Simmer. That. Oh yeah, baby. You know, flatty. No tag in it. Get shot of it there. Get him back alive. So that you guys can go catch him. Woo! Bam! Flathead time! Just what I'm looking for. Uh, I always like to catch a flathead no matter where I'm fishing. This one's out here open water. Uh, this is big open water. There's nothing really steep or anything out here. That was just one that's out feeding, probably uh, chasing some shad or perch down here on this end of the boat. Another one that came right away on the bait I put back out, that big perch head. And uh, who knows, maybe you've seen it falling through the water column and started following it. Not a super duper slammer bite. None of these bites have been explosive. Uh, I think I'm just getting some opportunistic feeding fish. Maybe what happened was last week when we had all the good fishing, uh, a few days ago when the fishing was really, really good. Um, who knows, maybe the fish are just, you know, they they fed and they their their bellies are full and they're locking it down. Who knows? All you can do is fish, guys. Get on the water and fish and try to figure it out, which is what I'm getting ready to do, try to catch another one. Well, guys, we're almost up on the bank here. It's still in 40 feet of water. It's a steep bank. Old Pinky went off. Sadly, I let way too much line out on Pinky. <laughs> I'm gonna be reeling for a while. Decent fish. 
Just getting ready to reset. Was looking at my mapping software, my Navionics, just to figure out where it's going to go next. We've got kind of a south wind going on. So I'm trying to figure out a drift that'll keep me in some deep water for a long time. My river basically runs north-south, but in this area, it kind of makes a little bit of a bend. So I'm trying to find me a good area to make a good pull along some of that deeper stuff. Being on the lower end of the lake, there's a lot of deep water here, so it uh, shouldn't be too hard. We're gonna reset here, as you can see behind me. I'm almost up on some piers. Puppy, yeah. Another good fish. A boga for him. I got a feeling they're pulling some water today. Uh, expecting some heavy rains tomorrow, and uh, that will two to three inches of rain. So there'll be an increase in water in the lake. So probably drawing it down some. It's another one in the teens. Finally got one on chicken. Good fish. Nice blue coming out of that deeper water. No mud on them. I guess they're somewhat active. Nice fish. Back alive. Well, pal, there you go. Right before I was getting ready to run it up on the bank at the end of that drift, I put another low teener in the boat. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna load up and go down a little bit further down the lake. I got pretty much a south wind which is one contrast to what was out here the other day on some of the guide trips. I had a north wind and we had a wind for several days and it could be this is just kind of scrambling up the mix here a little bit with what's going on and that'll happen sometime. You just have to keep fishing. So I'm gonna run down the lake a little bit, uh, make a long drag uh, along the edge of the river channel and into it and uh, see if we can stick one. Guys, we may have one on this rod here. It went over and then bounced back slack. Yep, there we go. Man, I'll tell you what, these fish are not on fire. I gotta let him get below the drift sock. There we go, let him go on down. This is not a big fish. Covered a lot of water. I am into about 50 feet right now. You notice I'm kind of nursing these fish up a little bit. Generally, I'm not fishing this deep of water. Get down below that drift site, big boy. But when I do, if I can, I try to take my time getting them up, especially once I get their head up off the bottom. I try to work them up a little bit slower just to help with some decompression issues. That last one we caught got right up at the top and blew up a bunch of bubbles. That's a good thing. This one, I've got a big Easterland drift sock out behind me. I'm trying to get this thing to drop below us. Sometimes they'll get up here in the water column and then dive. I think he's just, there he goes, he went down now finally. Sometimes they just want to get drug along on an Uber ride. <laughs> a catfish Uber. This one is on the perch, guys. It's on the perch. This will be fish number five, of which four have come on perch. What does that tell you? It tells you that bait ain't working today. Also fishing some waterways. I have a theory that some of these fish, let me get this thing in the boat and I'll tell you my theory. Got that one. Oh, I want y'all to look at this. This thing is, I'm glad I nursed it or I never would have got it here. That one, ah, he may be hooked better than I think. I thought he was barely hooked. That hook's in there pretty good. Pow, I think that's called a backstabber. It's very similar to an owner hook. These are from Hooker's Terminal Tackle. I think it's called a backstabber, similar to an owner. Nice wide gap like a Gamagatsu, uh, but it's got a shorter shank on it. Messing around with it and trying them out. 
Nice blue, good eater size one. Nothing super duper. Get him back alive. And what I was saying, my theory on the whole chicken thing is, I believe that maybe the magic combo with that chicken, maybe when these fish are around muscle beds feeding. That's what I'm thinking. Past few guy trips when we were using the chicken and killing them, and we're also pooping snail shells and mussel shells in the boat. It's my theory on it. It's just a theory. So you're probably wondering why all of a sudden are the bigger biting fish in the middle of the deepest part of the lake? Uh, it's not extremely hot, it's not extremely cold. Well, to be honest, I have no idea. Uh, it's part of the reason, uh, sometimes you can figure it out, sometimes you can come up with some kind of reason uh, maybe, you know, in the wintertime there's more stable temperatures deeper or in the summertime there's cooler water. Uh, but sometimes we can't make any rhyme or reason out of it. Who knows what the reason is. That's why I say covering water is very important. That's why I like to drift. Uh, drifting and trolling is a great way to cover water and figure out what's going on with the fish. I started out in a creek this morning fishing and uh, didn't really catch fish. I had caught them there, like I said, two or three days ago. I uh, came out here and said, well, you know what, I'm going to try something a little deeper and poof, catching some fish. It's not on fire, it's not crazy, but it's way better off than it was back in the creek. So why they do it, who knows? Maybe these are just the hungry fish. Maybe all the other fish have fed up uh, that were in there were more the bait was. It's hard to say, you just have to fish and be willing to roll with the punches and don't get locked into, I've got to do this certain thing right now because this is what the magazine said to do. Uh, a lot of times you just have to adapt. You can catch fish deep in the winter or in the summer. You can also catch them shallow, and I mean two, three, four feet of water in the winter or the summer. It just depends what's going on with the food and the bait and where the feeding fish are. So don't get locked into a pattern. Uh, lock in to where the feeding fish are. Yeah, I got a channel cat on this rod. Doing a little herky jerky head shaking there. Also got kind of a gaggle of stuff behind the boat because we're getting close to the dam, which you can see behind me. I think we're getting some current play off of that. I think I'm gonna have to go to the other side of the boat with this one. Probably gonna get every line in the process. 20 pound braid on here, uh, Power Pro. And it's a pin 4000 series. I got every line in the boat underneath that. Wow, might have got him cleared of everything. Anyway, it's a 4000 series pin battle two, uh, 20 pound braid, and it's a big cat fever, medium heavy rod. For any of you guys intimidated by bait casters, this is a great setup. Perfect stuff. This one may pop loose. He's barely hooked. Oh, you had to bite that finger, didn't you? Oh, we're down. I'm trying to help you out. You are a good size channel kit. That is a good size. That's a good size channel cat for Lake Wiley. They don't get that big anymore. Nice one, get it back alive. But yeah, this uh, setup, you guys that are looking for something a little less intimidating, a little less expensive. I'm telling you, throwing a bait caster, if you try it, it can be frustrating. So, set up like this put some fish in the boat. I need to get me another spool for this one, a replaceable spool, put me some mono on there, make it a little bit easier, but bam, we're catching. There you go, guys, that was a fat little fish, uh, about 50 feet of water right in the middle of the river channel. I'm kind of dragging upstream. I'm, I'm actually going upstream instead of going with the current. It's kind of the way the wind's coming. Wind's coming out of the south, water's flowing out of the north, so I'm just kind of floating up through here and uh there's a nice little fish and another one on chicken chicken making a comeback i was wondering this morning it was like uh pretty much all of them there but i think that's uh close to half of them uh, about equally split 
and I'm gonna keep dragging here. See if we can put some more in the boat. It's a uh, decent bite, uh, not on fire, not crazy. They're scattered, but definitely seems like for whatever reason, the eating fish are in here and around the deeper river channel water. On the catch the fever rod. <laughs> this is the 4000 series spinning reel here. I think I showed you earlier. Only 20 pound braid. It's like a guitar string. It's what I use typically fishing down at the coast, saltwater fishing. I don't use this rod, but I've got a smaller rod. But uh, I use it uh, chasing drum, flounder, some uh, trout, all that kind of stuff. Decided to put it on this reel or this rod. Give it a shot. Show you guys that you can catch these fish on spinning tackle. You don't need big old giant crazy stuff to do it. This isn't a big old giant crazy fish. I wish it was. But good normal sized fish that most people are going to be catching where they're fishing. Some a sweet thing. Oh, you pooping in my boat. That one came on chicken. Chicken side of the boat. Chicken making a comeback here late in the day. A fat blue boy. That's a fat little pig. Here, piggy piggy, give me an oink. I ain't oinking lately. Back alive. But yeah, guys, 20 pound line, just Santee rig. Rod works just fine. I'd probably go with a lighter rod, but I got a lot of muscle with the big cat fever rod. And uh, all that reel's for, just taking up line. All right, guys, there's one on the uh, chicken, another blue, good eater size blue. Uh, right here in the middle of the river channel, 50 feet of water is what I'm pulling through now. I don't fish this depth of water all that often, to be perfectly honest, but it's working right now. And uh, again, that was on chicken, so maybe there's some mussels down there they're uh, getting into, who knows, but uh, whatever it is, it's working. Got a mild breeze, probably about five to six miles an hour, but I got a big drift sock out. I'm pulling through here very very slow at about 0 0.3 0 0.4 and just creeping up this river channel just trying to uh give them all the opportunity they need to eat one of these baits guys yeah, just seen pinky fold over we'll see if it stayed buttoned i don't know if it's still on there or not i don't think it is i think the fish came off that was a chicken bite rod went over came back well there may be a fish on here it is it's coming swimming to the boat i don't want to jump in the boat with us go for a ride you want to get a picture taken is what it wants it wants to uh get a picture beater melhorn fishing Let's see if we can get him up here he's flopping and jerking Sometimes, guys, you let them have the hook. That one there looks like a whole lot of digging. There we go. Let him have it. 13 pounds. Get the fish. Let him take the hook with him. It ain't worth it. Not gonna lie. Guys, I think I got a pig sneaking off with a piece of chicken. I was actually just bringing some stuff in to move. Actually go home. I've had a pretty good day. It was evenly split. Got a couple rods in and stowed away and then I seen this one slowly creeping over. Chicken bait. Chicken bait. Can you believe that? Chicken. Was gonna go home even, five apiece. But no, no. Chicken had to make a comeback. Chicken made a comeback. That may be a good fish. Knows it's hooked now. Kind of swam off to the side. Acting like he didn't know he was hooked. Let's see what we 
down here. I hope it doesn't fill. I think I won't need a net. Oh, they hear that thing clank. Okay. You hear that net hit the boat, and it's like, look out, I'm leaving town. Goodbye, that's a good bend. Heck yeah. That right there, folks, is a heck of a way to finish the day. Let's get him in the boat and see how big he is. He's into my braided line. Hooked deep, good. You are not hooked deep. Well, you're hooked deep, but you're hooked in a good place. Beautiful hook removal. Excellent. Let's get you up here. Get some look at you. There he is. Look at that. Nice 20 pounder. Hello, world. Nice fish. Chicken monster. Eating on the chicken. Is back alive. I'm gonna end the day with that one. That's a great fish. Uh, 11 fish in the boat. Let's see how bad our braid tangle is here. Oh, oh, this may be an easy one. No, is there ever an easy tangle with braid? I think if I cut my mono, I can get this off here without a mess. But anyway, finish up. Great day, great day of fishing. Deep water, that's where they're at. Folks, no matter what the magazine tells you, whatever it says in the book, whatever it says on TV, that you're supposed to be doing a certain time, it's not always that way. Sometimes these fish are going to do what they're going to do for whatever reason they're doing, and you just got to change your game up. And that's what we did today. So, hope y'all do the same. Go catch one. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no, do do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.